Greetings, my fellow Freedom Low Sovereign Thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to the LO3 Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the wild and wonderful mountain state. And today's date is Sunday, September 27th, 2020. Well, I'm not going to be doing any rants here. Just going to be uh, brief. And it's just funny when you have individuals out there want more bigger government. It looks like a lot of the clowns in the Democratic Party are doing, want that. Because even when Donald Trump appointed a woman judge to have her in the Supreme Justices, and all these folks are having the cow, you hear guys like Chucky Boy Schumer, Pinocchio himself, we got it, you should be done after the election. No, it doesn't say anything in the Constitution like that. On Article 2, all you got to do is read, folks. But they believe they're smarter than everybody else. Why? Because individuals like them assume the United States government should revolve around them. Well, you know what? That don't mean dealing squat in my book. All I hear is nothing more than nonsense. Watching, listening to Chris Ann Hall talk about it is very good. I always recommend to check her out. She had one on uh, Constitutional America, episode 16. Yeah, look it up. It's really good stuff. It's on YouTube. Subscribe to her. Tell them, look, look, the third sent you. You won't be disappointed. Well, without further ado, instead of me ranting, I'm going to be addressing, narrating an article here from the nationalinterest.org. What is court packing and why do Democrats support it? It's written by Rachel Pacino. So the title will be like, U.S. Supreme Court Packing, and it's nothing new under the sun. It's nothing new under the sun, excuse me. As it reads here, in the aftermath of the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a Washington political power struggle erupted as Republicans seized the opportunity to grasp a conservative-leaning Supreme Court with President Donald Trump's nominee, a possibility that ignited Democrats to revive the progressive idea of expanding the nation's high court to more than nine seats. And it's funny with this liberal conservatism. How about liberty, freedom, constitutional? Okay. That's more I like. Not the faction rhetoric. With Democrats infuriated by the likelihood of a 6-3 rightward majority in the Supreme Court in the upcoming weeks, the party has considered court packing if Democratic nominee Joe Biden wins the White House and Democrats regain the majority in the Senate. We should have all the options on the table, including numbers of justices that are on the Supreme Court. Progressive, but actually stagnant. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez from New York last said, said last weekend. She don't even, can't, she's not even constitutionally illiterate. Constitutionally illiterate, excuse me. How she qualified to speak, to speak up, please. What is court packing? It's a move, a radical idea that broadens the Supreme Court, adding more judges than what exists now. Would tilt the highest court to be more left leaning if Biden is elected and Democrats rally even enough federal level support to pass the law. The Constitution doesn't state how many justices must sit over the court, as Congress has manipulated the scope of it several times, starting out with six justices and reaching as high as 10. There have been nine justices in the Supreme Court for well over a century. But former presidents have attempted to swell the court's bench, including President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. In 1937, Roosevelt pushed legislation that would have extended the court from 9 to 15 justices due to his growing aggravation of justices rejecting his New Deal legislation. Because I'm special. Never was. Roosevelt emphasized putting age limitation on the courts by adding a justice for each one that served 70 past, past 70 because of the justice's lifetime appointments, but the move was viewed as political ploy to change the court and compel the justice to back New Deal laws. Congress severely opposed 
Roosevelt's court packing plan, and the and in and, and, and in the end, the Supreme Court's approach to the New Deal agenda shifted, which became known as the switch time that saved nine. Why Democrats support it? The overall argument behind packing the court is to morph the political composition of the Supreme Court, as Democrats may believe that the ideology represent within the highest court does not accurately represent the nation's public opinion, since justice effectively can't be fired except by impeachment, which is in the Constitution, by the way, all right? Article 1, if I'm correct, uh, talk about impeachments, okay? The idea of court packing is to dilute their vote. Georgia University law professor Josh Chaftis told the Washington Post. And there's multiple sections in there about that, about impeachment. So just look it up. Look up the, Read the U.S. Constitution before you run your mouth. I'm just sorry to say that, but that's how it goes. After two, after two of Trump's Supreme Court nominations, Neil Gorish and Brett Kavanaugh, Democrats have yearning to reshape into the court. Ginsburg's death revved up these political goals as comments from congressmen have hinted in favor of packing a court with more liberal judges if there is a double dem- if there's a double Democratic win in November. Well, liberal judges, yeah, more tyrannical, more constitutionally ignorant, more like, hey, so, um, judicial supremacy, okay? That's, how, that's what they want in November. So let, let me be clear. If uh, Leader McDon- McDon- McConnell and Senate Republicans move forward that there's, then there's nothing off the table for next year. Nothing's off the table. Leader Chuck Schumer from New York, Pinocchio himself, told his caucus on a call after Ginsburg's death. See, because I'm from New York and I'm an attorney, I know more than you. That's Chuck Schumer for you. The idea of court packing was a topic of debate during a Democratic presidential primaries, where as many as 11 candidates, according to the Post, said they were least open to it. It's not just about expansion. It's about depoliticizing the Supreme Court. Senator Warren, Elizabeth Warren said, it's a conversation that's worth having. We need to reform the Supreme Court in a way to strengthen its independence and restore the people's public trust as a check to the presidency and the Congress. That's what Peter um, Buttigieg uh, said. Another, other candidates, including Kamala Harris from California, Amy Kobelart from Minnesota, and Cory Booker also said they are, would consider researching the idea. Yeah, yippee yapping yahoo, he recommends it. We'll consider, please. Can't even tie your own shoelace. I've seen all your clowns track record, unimpressive as usual. Does this have a chance to pass? Biden has been adamant in denying the court packing request as a proven it would hurt Democrats in the future once Republicans eventually regain control in the upper chamber or in the White House. As a lawmaker who has been on Capitol Hill for more than three decades, Biden is known as someone who hopes to preserve a traditional political agenda. In recent days, however, the former vice president didn't directly answer when asked if he supports the progressive idea of expanding the court. Let's say I, that I answer that que- let's say I answer that question, then the whole debate going to be about what Biden said or didn't say. Biden said he would or wouldn't. Biden said in a local interview in Wisconsin after Ginsburg's past discussion should be about why the president is moving in a direction that's totally inconsistent with what the founders wanted. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they talk about constitutional constitutional King Biden, right? Please. Expanding the court is seen as a progressive move. So doing so likely repel moderate voters from Biden's race to the White House in November. Even though the push is backed by many Democrats, it would be difficult for the party to rally a complete majority to side with the court packing plan. Similar to moderate voters, swing Democrats would also be resistant to support such a radical agenda, that would virtually change the fundamental ideological scope on the Hill. If Democrats gain control of the White House and the Senate in November, as well as maintain a majority in the House, seizing a liberal-leaning Supreme Court by adding more justices would 
change the nine justice tradition that has been practiced for nearly 150 years. Considering the state of the country battling the dead coronavirus pandemic and economic collapse, court packing also wouldn't be at the top of Biden's agenda. It is unlikely that America will have to have a will have a Roosevelt repeat where the president is is so frustrated if he tries to expand the court to pass legislation, but if elected in November, Biden could offer a n- number of surprises. Well, well, well. So, more expanded government, judicial supremacy. That's what comes down to it, folks. I can see a small, right now, nine sufficient. We don't need 15, we don't need 25, we don't need 21, etc. It's ridiculous. I see a lot of desperation right now with certain those elements in the Democratic Party. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good folks in the, in this um, group that do, will work together with others. But you've got the ones with the stub. The mouthpieces are repugnant, pathetic, downright ludicrous. And don't get me wrong, folks. Even the members of the Republican Party, they got their ass clowns as well. I do not support this. By any means. Awful, stupid, lousy. We, as far as I'm concerned, we need to get out of this corporate, in corporate doctrine, and doctrine, even on this local and state level, use the U.S. Con, US, US con, federal constitution. We need to focus on our state laws, state um, and enactments, or the supreme law of their own states. Florida, West Virginia, Virginia, etc. The state constitutions are very essential. So that's how we got to look at these things. Because here's here, of course, these people are going to get paid a lot more. And right now, we're in an economic collapse. We're really like $26 trillion in debt. Debt is the, makes a nation weak. We see what's happened in other places through the central banking. So I encourage everyone, if this bill comes out, I haven't seen it yet. If this bill comes out, call it as it is. Garbage, repugnant, null and void. And you know what? That is it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you sense something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please share your correspondence with the quorum. Furthermore, I'll leave this article on my speaker page. If you want to do a donation, you can hit me at paypal.me forward slash Loki Luck number three. It's all together. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul. And can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.